to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson, and I'm here to guide you in everything you need to know about gemstones and jewelry. Now, it's come to my attention that many people still struggle with the polariscope. So what I've done is I've put together a set of four stones that can help you to make sure that you know what you're seeing from this device. By way of quick review, the polariscope is a tool that allows us to see the optic character of the stone. Is it singly refractive, meaning it does not split light? Or is it doubly refractive, splitting light into a faster and a slower ray? And without diving into all the deep science, singly refractive stones are the same from every direction on the most fundamental levels of the crystal. And doubly refractive stones have tiny unit cells, the basic building blocks of the crystal that are asymmetrical. So as light goes through the stone from one direction, as opposed to the other direction, it will move faster or slower. And that is unique to that type of crystal. Corundum, ruby and sapphire, will always split light. If it doesn't split light, it ain't corundum. But the polariscope can actually tell us a bit more information as well. Some stones that split light may have multiple optic axes. Axes. So corundum is just going to have one optic axis, being uniaxial, whereas peridot, which is in this kit, is biaxial. It'll have two axes. And the polariscope can actually show that with something called the optic figure. In order to do that, we're going to need an extra lens. This thing is called the conoscope. And the conoscope, when used with a polarizing filter right here on the top, can show us that optic figure. So what I have in this kit are the four stones that will show the four distinct features that you would be looking for when using the polariscope. We have one uniaxial stone, which is aquamarine. We have another uniaxial stone that has a unique feature called the bullseye effect, which is only present in quartz. So we have the piece of amethyst here. We have a biaxial stone, peridot. And then as I've said before, we shy away from using red stones in the polariscope, even if this one is purple-ish, because this one has what we call anomalous double refraction. It will look like it's doubly refractive, but you will never be able to find an optic figure. Each of these stones is a cabochon. And the reason I did that is because it's much easier to find that optic figure with a cabochon. The rounded face of the cabochon acts as a lens to focus the optic figure. So if you come on over here, I will show you each of these optic figures in the polariscope. Okay, so as a refresher, how does the polariscope work? What we're gonna do is take one of our stones, we're going to turn on the polariscope, make sure we are in crossed filters, which means that the two polarizing filters are in opposite directions. None of the light should be going through. Then we're gonna take our cabochon, put it in between, and we're going to rotate it around. Now, as we rotate the stone, we're going to see this dark brush moving over the face of the stone. Depending on your orientation, like if you were looking from the bottom, the stone may appear to blink. So when you start to see the stone blink, you want to slow down so that you can see as it darkens. The darkening is actually that dark brush. And then we're going to rotate the stone, trying to follow the lengthwise direction of that dark brush. Because at the end of the dark brush is where we're going to find our optic figure. Now, right here we have this blue piece, which I'll go ahead and tell you is aquamarine. And aquamarine, barrel, is a uniaxial stone. So once I get to the end of that dark brush, we're going to see some rainbow colors. We call these interference colors. And at the end of that interference color, in this case, because it's uniaxial, we're going to see a cross. Now, if you want to make it even easier on yourself, use the conoscope. Sometimes it's just a glass rod, but any kind of a lens will work, even your pocket loop. Well, my loop lives in my pocket. Once you have found that optic figure, put the conoscope over top of it and it will enlarge it for you, make it a lot easier to see. Especially once we get to biaxial stones, that will be important. Uniaxial tends to be quite stonky. Now, you might be asking, how do I know where to look for this dark brush? And the answer is, you don't. You have to use your eyes, because depending on how they cut the stone, was the crystal growing like this and then they orient the stone like this? Or did they orient the stone like this? All of that can change where this optic axis is going to be found. So there is no hard and fast rule. So we've got our uniaxial. Let's move on to the other uniaxial stone, which is quartz. But quartz has a unique feature some of the time, frankly it's quite frequent, called the bullseye effect. So with our quartz, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna go through looking for that dark brush, follow the dark brush to its end, and if you've gotten this kit from me, you will be able to find a bullseye effect or another specific quartz feature. Airy spirals, but it's close enough to the bullseye effect, which again, only occurs with quartz. 
All right, now let's move on to our biaxial stone, peridot. Peridot, topaz, and quite a number of other stones that you've heard about are biaxial stones. They have multiple optic axes. So let's take a look and see what that looks like under the polariscope. In this case, it's going to be helpful to use the conoscope to enlarge the sign. And once you've seen it in this context, it's a lot easier to find on vast stones. So the last thing that I want to show you is what anomalous double refraction looks like. And for that, we're going to be using a garnet. As I've said in previous episodes, red stones are not to be trusted in the polariscope, and this is exactly why. As we move it around, we will see it seem to blink. So as we try and follow that dark brush, you're going to notice that we can't do anything. It doesn't go anywhere. And this is exactly why we don't trust red stones in the polariscope. But if you're comfortable with the spectroscope, you'd have no questions to pick that up, give this a look and know exactly what it is. So for those of you that are starting out and you're trying to get into gemology and you're training your eye to see these optic figures, this kit is a great place to start. Once you've seen it in cabochons, then you can go to fasted material and practice and practice and practice until you're an expert at finding that optic figure. The reason fasted material is more of a struggle is because that optic axis, the end point of the dark brush that we were talking about, may sometimes be hidden over on a tiny facet or even on the girdle. So if you're not an expert at finding that dark brush, you may spend a half hour looking for the thing. And at a certain point, you just move on to the next stone. So for those of you that are looking to get your hands on this kit, it is available at gemshepherd.com, where you can also get in touch with me directly. Otherwise, leave a comment down below. Hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Tell all of your friends about me. And until next time, bye-bye.